everybody, welcome to another edition of Beer and Bullshit with myself, Corey McGee, one of your hosts, and uh, my co-host, Mr. Jason Bosno. How are you doing tonight, Jay? Not too bad. I thought I was trying to make a joke there, maybe just not say anything, look at you muted, like just, just not say anything. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can just mime at the mic. <laughs> so tonight we're hanging out with Mark Rodrigue, local personality. I, you know what? I was trying to think of a way to describe Mr. Mm. Rodrigue tonight, and uh, I went through your like your Instagram bio, and I said, okay, so he's a six-star chaser, which we will get into what that means anyways a little bit later. And uh, the only thing I come up with is local running personality. Does that make sense? I guess it could. Yeah. It could. (laughs) Well, (laughs) we're a few things. We're really happy to have you here in the basement tonight, uh, Mark. So, uh, well, thank you for having me. This is great. Thanks. Uh, This is, this is quite the setup you have here. (laughs) It is. It is. It's, uh, some would call it over the top. We've Mm -hmm. had, uh, other people, other podcasters on the podcast and they sort of come in here and they say, uh yeah uh we just sit around an ipad and talk into like uh, <laughs> a crappy little, mic yeah our headphones <laughs> kind of what i thought we were going to be doing but this is kind of cool yeah yeah it's, it's a little kind of cool <laughs> so it's not cool no no it's cool it's kind of <laughs> it's like yeah it's all right i mean it's no ctv or uh, east link <laughs> Public public access TV, but yeah, there we go. it'll do. <laughs> no, we're really happy to have you here. And uh, tonight, the one of the reasons why I felt like we wanted to uh, invite you on here tonight is because Jay and I have, obviously, anybody who's been following us on social media, have recognized that we've gotten into running. We've decided to start moving again because we were getting really fat. Yep. Yeah, and drinking a lot <laughs> Game back there, too. And uh, we've been spouting off like we know what we're talking about when it comes to running. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I thought it might be a good idea or uh, to, to get more informed on the subject of running from somebody who's a little bit more experienced. So uh, well, maybe you'll be able to provide us with some, I don't know, tips? Insight? Ins- insight. Insight on there the subject. Go, there we go. So that said, uh, I want to kind of turn the floor over to you for a little bit and uh Tell it like give us a short bio of yourself. Like, what are your interests? What what are the the things that sort of um, would define you as a person here, and and the reason why we would want to come talk we would want to talk to you here tonight. Well, I figured you would tell me that tonight. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> you come here and you talk about yourself. Yeah. We'll hey, sit back. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have questions you want to ask yourself? Because yeah. please ask yourself, <laughs> and we'll sit here and drink. <laughs> No, I, well, listen, uh, yes, um, you know, as far as uh, what I'm, uh, I'm passionate about, I definitely love running. So I think uh, you hit the uh, nail on the head there. I do, uh, I like to get out there. I like to move. Um, my, uh, my drive for that, uh, even growing up as a kid, I mean, I grew up, uh, you know, on Birch Street here in Timmins and uh, we were pretty active outside all the time. All the kids were outside moving. Uh, you know, I was running then, I was playing hockey, doing whatever we're always very active so <clears throat> i've always been a very busy body and um you know at the end of the day uh, you know i started working uh, you know the careers you know come on and uh, i was working in the banking industry as well at, mm-hmm. at the time and uh, i thought uh, you know what uh, i was getting a little heavier uh, i i think um you're pretty well. Uh, you're pretty well, right? When you're talking about uh, some motivation to start running, <laughs> yeah. so uh, so and, and I, you know, and I played soccer and uh, those kinds of things. But uh, running truly was uh, was a passion for me. It always has been. Like I mean, I ran at Terry as well, and uh, uh, it's always been in me. I when you're at, when you're on a start line, mm-hmm. you're, you know, you feel like man, you can go and you're always testing yourself and not that you're racing against everybody. You're kind of racing against yourself mm-hmm. all the time. That's something that, uh, you know, I've, you know, I'm not, I'm never going to finish first in a marathon or anything like that, but I'm always challenging myself and mm-hmm. I like that aspect of it. So I kind of like the, the running piece because of that. Nice. Uh, other things, uh, that I like too, uh, like, I'm a foodie as well. I like mm-hmm. I like food. <laughs> yeah, you're a Fuel. co-founder of a local uh, produce farm, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's called. Uh, here's a cheesy plug there, but no, no, that's fine. <laughs> no, do hey, it. Talk hey, about hey, it. Hey, talk about it. <laughs> talk about it. Absolutely, we want to talk about that. Yeah, no, tell us a little bit about that. that. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and this is part of the transformation piece that I had uh, at one point, right? Uh, working, uh, I was working uh, some crazy hours and uh, getting overweight. And I uh, wasn't eating very well either. Didn't feel very well. So just uh, took up a couple of books, started reading and uh, started uh, realizing that, hey, maybe I should start moving again. And maybe I should uh, 
look at nutrition as well. So mm-hmm. uh, I was going to say that, like it, the way you're kind of outlining this, it seems like there was a bit of a low spot there. Like a, you were active as a kid, active through, all throughout high school, then started working in the banking industry, and then it was sedentary occupation. I'm absolutely. sure, right? So you find yourself sitting down a lot, not moving, maybe not forming some other bad habits, right? And then that seems to be a bit of an impetus to start to move again because that I found that to be like a commonality amongst a lot of people. There's yeah. They just find themselves, even if they were active when they were young, they just have some period of their life where it's like, oh, I'm a, uh, for lack of a better expression, a lazy piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> badass. <laughs> I'm being a badass. That's you know? so okay. Yeah, yeah, Did you yeah. say badass or exactly. badass? <laughs> hey, I was... I was it's at, that kind of podcast. Yeah, so. I was active <laughs> when I was younger, then I worked at the bank, and then I... <laughs> I was a huge fat ass, so. <laughs> yeah. So how many marathons are you going to run now? Oh, we'll see about that. Uh, <laughs> I'll put one in next year. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's get that in writing somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Uh, I'm, tr- I'm trying to motivate Jay because. Because yeah. uh, I'm fat? No, no, not because <laughs> you're fat. No. Cause <laughs> but I, not just because I'm fat. I've seen the benefits that it can it can bring, you know, like. Um, <laughs> no, no, to myself. Okay. Not not to you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> not to you. Well, that too, but I mean. Um. No, that that's one thing that I found. Like I, uh, I was never a runner in high school. I played, I played hockey yeah. growing up and all that. Yeah. But and Jay and I talk about this often on on the podcast that we played hockey together growing up. And I I definitely found that after stop after I stopped playing hockey yeah. and like I'd still play pickup and I go through spurts of going to the gym. And being there for a couple months, and yeah. then you get in shape, and then you sort of get lazy again, and fall out it's of kind shape. Kind of very inconsistent, right? Yeah, and that's, that's kind of the lull that uh, everybody tends to go through. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of the <clears throat> yo-yoing yep. of uh, whether it be your diet or whether it be whatever um, thing that you're falling into. It's kind of like the New Year's resolution syndrome, right? Yep, exactly. And exactly. the one thing that I, I found getting into running uh, has helped me with is kind of regain that. Uh, competitive drive, right? Yeah. Even if it's just comp- competition with myself, uh, and that's helped me sort of sustain it for for more. I, I don't know. I guess it's a year now, but I before that, I'd never been able to work out for a year steady. You know, no, okay. with any kind of like. Um, uh, consistency, consistency yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. The fact that you you've gone over a year already now, and uh, you've actually uh, you're, you're seeing some benefit of running. Uh, you're yeah. And uh, but I think that's part of it. Eh? Running is uh, the challenge to yourself. I mm-hmm. think is a, is a is a pretty big thing. Um, for myself, I just um, as well. You know, when I started running again, uh, just got into a couple of books. You know, Born to Run and yeah. those types of books. It's great, eh? Oh, it's what fantastic! A I yeah. love the book. I I think I read it like in. Less than a week. Like, really? Yeah. Uh, my wife was kind of like, "Hey, uh, come on, uh, smart up." <laughs> what are we gonna do? Yeah, we gotta do something else. It was kind of funny because uh, the book uh, was a gift from her. Uh, like she, she works in a law firm, and um, her boss Kevin had uh, had recommended this book, and he actually gave it to me as a gift. Okay. So I read this book, and it didn't take me long to read this, and then. He, he had no idea what he got him. <laughs> what, what, what <laughs> kind of impact this book had on me, right? And my wife too was like, "What the heck?" So I read that book, and then I read, uh, you know, Finding Ultra. I read uh, Eat and Run uh, by Scott Jurek, and, oh, okay. uh, the Rich Rolls guys, and all all of these books. And I've read, a, I don't know, probably about a dozen of these books. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of the the books they talk about the transformation of the individual as mm-hmm. well, and getting mm-hmm. to know yourself, and pushing your body, and pushing your boundaries, and 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 not. Uh, and alleviating, I guess, if you will, the barriers that we kind of self-impose on ourselves yeah. and you don't yeah. realize it, right? Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, ah, screw it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So can you trace like <clears throat> specific titles to specific changes that you made along the way or decisions you made? Yeah. Well, in terms of, um, yeah, in terms of running, Born to Run sort of got me going again and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, going out uh, at the time I had a beautiful black lab. Her name was Syrah. I loved mm-hmm. her to death and she was my first running partner. Uh, but it, you know, in the winter time running out and, uh, just, it just felt really nice. Like mm-hmm. it really, you know, and I had a, I had some really hectic jobs too. So at, uh, at the end of the day, I can go for my run and it's kind of like my me time and it mm-hmm. kind of felt great. And I was feeling better. Um, did a few half marathons at that time as well. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, you know, I kept on reading these books and then finding ultra was one of the catalysts for me in terms of, um, 
pushing that transformation that I've gone through. Okay. Who who wrote that? Rich Rolls. Rich Rolls. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just uh, he, he's a uh, you know I guess he was probably in his early forties at the time, but okay. uh, he had uh, he had gone through a period where he was pretty inactive, and uh, uh, he's a lawyer walking up mm. his stairs, and he felt his heart pound out of his chest and thought he was having a heart attack. And he used to be uh, you know a national swimmer for the U.S. Uh, swim team, and anyways ended up. Uh, you know, creating a book about his transformation and what mm-hmm. he had started to do. And he had really put or talked about nutrition in his book as well okay. to some degree. Yeah, because Born to Run doesn't really, it, it, no. that, that reads like a story. That's right? a story, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Terror Muharren tribe. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, Copper yeah, Canyon yeah. That's in Mexico. right. Uh, you got to go, read that. I want to go, You'd like it. I want to go run there, actually. <laughs> the way they describe it in the book, like it's. Uh, like running, it's it sounds like you're running in a oven. Like it's just so hot in the, surrounded surrounded uh, by the drug cartel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cartel. And it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Kind of legendary. But yeah, you were talking about the um, uh, uh, Rich Roll's book. Yeah. Uh, on how he focused on nutrition and uh, that made that sort of spark some changes in you. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, for myself, uh, there was, I was, as I was reading his book, I mean, I was re- I, I, at that time I was running half marathons and, um, I had finished a half marathon. I was really tired and I was very, uh, well, I was just very tired. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to die sometimes. <laughs> it was crazy. And, uh, I was, I know the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, uh, one, uh, one uh, week I had said, uh, you know what, I'm just going to tweak some of the things what Richard's doing, Richard Roll's doing, Rick Roll's doing, I, I'm going to, or Rich Roll's, I'm going to try to actually eliminate dairy in my, in my diet and some meats and just try to be a little bit more uh, uh, plant-based, I guess. For okay. That. Okay. So I did that. And then on the Saturday morning, I had a run. I was running from my place to the mine site on the back road and back. Okay. And uh, from there to my place is 21 kilometers, okay. which is a half marathon. And that was my long run. I was actually starting to train for a marathon at that time too. So. And, uh, and yeah. you're how old at this point, if, I, if you don't uh, mind me asking? That's a great question. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I think I was probably like uh, 35, maybe. Yeah, see, that there's, there's something about this like time, time yeah. in life. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Um, and, and I took off. I, I took off that morning. I slowed down my pace a little bit and uh, ran the 21 kilometers. Uh, ended up actually finishing just a few minutes slower than what I typically run. Mm -hmm. And I got to my place and I, and I was sitting in the front of my house and I was like, Hmm, I feel like I can go do another 20 (laughs) minutes. I seriously felt that. And I was like, what the heck is going on here? So from that point on, I started implementing it a little bit more. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, my recuperation after long runs is is spectacular as far as I'm concerned, uh, running marathons. And, uh, you know, a couple of days later, I, I have no pain. Like I'm, I'm really good. I can really go run. Yeah. Wow. So you're, you have a full vegan diet or vegetarian? Yeah, I'm. A, I consider plant based. I'm a okay. plant based guy. Okay. Uh, vegan is, uh, you know, I unfortunately I have leather couch at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to. You know, not I, not I an listen. ethical. Uh... Well, I, to some degree, but okay. uh, I kind of like the term plant based. Okay. More, okay. And, uh, okay. It kind of suits me a little bit better as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. And and you've seen a lot of benefits from that. Myself personally, yeah, yeah absolutely. Inflammation mm-hmm. uh, in the joints, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I'm pr- I'm pretty good that way. Well, the recovery component is really interesting to me because, um, it, like, pro- meat protein has always been thought of as something that you need, mm-hmm. right? As far or the most efficient way to get that repair material, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, after a lot of really strenuous uh, activity. So, like, how do you find yourself coping with that? Do you find that it's just, like, you don't overthink it? Or do, do you have a lot of uh, plant-based protein in your in Oh, your absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, Oh, right? absolutely. Okay. But I, I don't see any, uh, like, in terms of, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a misconception, I think, with the yeah. meat piece. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, I think anyways, um, but for me, uh, just, you know, my, my beans, legumes, that kind of stuff, uh, they do me well. <laughs> yeah, eh? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Huh. That's where he drops his uh, company name and talks about what they sell to, <laughs> to help him with that aspect. Yeah. 
Well, that's another yeah. big kill. Yeah. Like, I mean, we we obviously grow produce, right, with mm-hmm. our company called Borealis Fresh Farms. Yes. Plug again? Yes. Yeah. Please. Shameless plug. Pl- you know? Plug it all you want. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna tag it in the uh, when we share this podcast on uh, all our social media. We'll make sure that mm-hmm. uh, all that's tagged. And oh, thank anyone you. Anyone who's following. Uh, who who likes the unhealthy habit of having lots of beer? They can start thinking about uh, well, the you other can, stuff. Well, you can now, balance too. the beer consumption with the kale consumption. There you go. So there's got to be a ratio there, there somewhere. You go. Beer and a kale salad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and and in fact, um, <clears throat> so following that, I that's where I sort of transform the the most, I guess. Mm-hmm. And um, and then after that, the next big step for me was. Uh, figuring out how to actually get fresh local produce because <clears throat> since I was a plant-based runner as well, uh, one of the things that uh, really uh, irked me a little bit is when I was buying produce at the store and I had to throw half of it out or, you know, those kinds of things. Produce doesn't last very long up here. So food insecurities, I got involved with that a little bit, uh, you know, wrapped my head around that whole system and thought, you know what, I got to try to figure out how to... Um, how to try to fix this thing or to, or to support anyways, uh, so we can have local produce and Borealis Fresh Farms was born from was that. born from that. Absolutely. Okay. And yeah. do you guys have a location, uh, like within Timmins or? Yeah. 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 We're in, so, well, we're actually like? in South Porcupine. South Porcupine. Oh, no, not, Timmins. Not, Tim- <laughs> not Timmins. Not Timmins. Well, it depends. <laughs> Timmins, it's like GTA. Oh uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it, the Greater on, Timmins the area. Greater Timmins. On, on this podcast, because <laughs> J, Jay and I grew up playing hockey against uh, South South Porcupine, and yeah, oh, every time yeah. a name, <laughs> like Dog River and whatever. Uh, um, what oh, that's gonna bother me. Yeah, but the, yeah this is great pod. Who yeah. did you guys play for uh, when you were younger? We for whoever. Like whoever. Timmins, who's did you play midget hockey? We played yeah. midget. Yeah, so played we all played, the, way it was the Flyers when we were playing the Timmins Flyers. Yeah, yeah. Tiffany Kitchen. Tiffany uh, Kitchen Flyers. Flyers. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. we played. Uh, oh, we played Tiffany before King. Ice Dogs, which was yeah, the Soviet, the Soviet before Lumber. that, ah, and then okay, uh, all yeah, that cool, crap. Cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good pretend stuff. to play. <laughs> yeah, we. Yeah, the anyway. good old hockey days. The good old hockey days. Yeah, uh, we're we're gonna have to get into the, some of the changes in hockey. Did you play hockey in Timmins growing up? Well, yeah. I didn't play organized hockey too much. Yeah. Uh, I was um, actually we we played a lot of road hockey all the time. Okay, we were always outside. Man. Okay, there was a lot of a lot of kids in our area, and we were always doing something. He was a runner, Corey. He didn't play. He hockey. didn't play hockey. See, I was gonna <laughs> in but, high school. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but this is the one thing that I've found as far as you know benefits of running. Um, like I played hockey my whole life, and I thought I was in shape. Yeah. from playing hockey it, like when i was playing hockey seven days a week and then i start running for a year and now like playing hockey i don't i don't get tired yeah. it's not uh, it's not that you skate any faster or that you're any better it's just you just well don't your body get becomes tired. more efficient yeah. oh you become God. much more efficient absolutely it's crazy yeah. crazy and and on all fronts too this is I, i'm not sure how you felt about this when you because one of the things that that I found struck me from what you were talking about is that you were working a very busy job, something that uh, probably high family, enough workload, yeah. stress, you know, family, family life, life, young kids, that, yeah. right? And uh, and it, it starts to add up a lot, right? And you got to sort that stuff out. And if your mind's not in order, it, it's it's real difficult to start sort of set your priorities, get into your routines, and Absolutely. so on. And like I, I put a post out after I just recently ran my first marathon. Hey, congratulations! And by the way, you. that's pretty awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank, I was, I was, everybody. I was at the finish line at like three hours to like three hours twenty minutes. You know, supposedly when the fast people finish, <laughs> and I left. I, once I, I must have missed them. Uh, yeah, I don't know where. What did you finish again in? Sorry, three twenty six. Oh, was you sorry? That's I, awesome. I that's a great time. You it should was, be proud of that. I, I was, I was very happy with it. Um, um, I, I honestly had no idea how fast I was going to run this. I'd set a completely arbitrary goal based yeah. on like my first half marathon time. And uh, yeah. I mean, okay. <laughs> I, kn- I knew after I hit 25 kilometers, I was like, well, if, if I finish this thing, I'm going to be happy. You know? <laughs> so the, the one thing that I found from just training and I, I had put a post after I finished it. And as I said, some people have asked me like, have I gotten this out of my system? You know, like why would I want to devote so much time to training and everything? And I said, just doing this training, I found, I found so much more time. Like I found myself being so much more focused and organized in my, in my thinking, in, uh, in my day, like just uh, things that, 
the time where I used to sit around trying to figure out, okay, well, what do I need to do? What am I going to do next? It just exactly. it came to me, right? Yeah. It, it made me that much more sharp. And then also f- not feeling like a bag of ass, like for 75% <laughs> of the time, yeah. made me sort of feel like I, I, I could um, get going a lot yeah, quicker absolutely. in the morning, you know? You know, there are many, many great things to do on this planet, man. Like mm-hmm. Living, you got to live your life too, yeah. to a certain degree, right? And being healthy and being able, having the ability to do things is a, is a great, is a great thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, running sort of preps your body for that kind of stuff, right? And, yeah. and your brain too. Like, you know, you talk about, you know, at the 25K mark. Well, then the battle begins. <laughs> and it's not, the so phys- it's not the physical battle, it's the mental yeah. battle. Yeah. So you're really, um, you really have to, um, you have to, you're developing a lot of mental toughness That's as well right. as you're going through. So, uh, and in terms of simplifying life by running more, you kind of do because, you know, when I go for my long runs and I've got uh, some complex issues that I have to think about and stuff, where do you think I do my best thinking? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm running and I think about this and then all of a sudden my run's done and I'm like, okay, okay, I think I can tackle it this way. This, yes. you know? So it, it, it helps to clarify things as well for me. And it gives you an opportunity to be you with, you know, if you listen to podcasts like this great podcast, <laughs> you know, you can do some. Said great. <laughs> <laughs> might be going a little, t- <laughs> might be too quick on that. Well, well, you gave me a beer and bulls <laughs> yeah. t- uh, I mean, a t-shirt, what am I saying? A hat. So <laughs> I have to uh, <laughs> no, no. represent now. Yeah. yeah we're going to get Jay to talk about yeah. our new merch oh, later. <laughs> Um, but, but running allows you to be with yourself that way and to think things through yeah. and, to, uh, and to learn a lot about yourself as well. And, and trust me, when you run a marathon, and I'm sure, well, I'm sure you probably at one point what, during your run, you'll learn something about yourself. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I, the, the thing that I, I keep telling people that I learned the most was how much, like, one, how much I could actually do, like how much I could push and I thought I was tired but and you just got a That's whole right. other quarter gas tank left and also just getting back to like how much time that I there is in a day right mm-hmm. like I I was doing more and arguably I was more tired expending more energy but I was getting up earlier in the morning and I was still going to bed like I'm, I'm not in bed at 8 30 at night like mm-hmm. I'm still going to bed 10 30 11 o'clock yeah. but I'm up at 5 30 in the morning and I'm ready to do stuff you know, and and just that change and that found time yeah. allows you to do so much more with your day. Like yeah. they, I I used to struggle with things like you know, okay, you'd organize the podcast, and uh, I'd, I'd 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 have like a band practice or something like yeah. that a little bit later, and try to organize that with family life and work and everything. And you, it sort of takes the fun away from all those other things. Yeah. You add running a <laughs> like a fifteen k <laughs> run in there. And suddenly it's like, oh, oh, that's a piece of cake. Yeah, you can get it all done at the same time. You although it. you're out there for an hour, an extra hour and a half, right? So, yeah, 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 absolutely. No, I get you, man. I, I really do. I, 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 I sense that when I run too. Yeah. And uh, even though my life is not that organized either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it, it, it might. It, it is still okay. <laughs> might be giving the wrong impression there. Yeah. Like, might, did you find that there was a big change? In that in that aspect, in the getting my day ready or be, have more to my day, just having your shit together. Yeah, I guess so. I I just also felt like when I don't know what it is now. Now, if I don't when I don't go for my run or I don't even try to do like a little workout or something, I always feel like oh, I wasted a day. Mm-hmm. And I would, being a guy who naps, mm-hmm. you know, like I would I was maybe still take a nap, but it was just like it was like, all right, I'm just gonna I'll lie here, I can take a nap, and I can be up and just go do whatever. Mm. Where now it's just like I'm just like when you when I don't do something, I just feel lethargic all day. Yeah. It's like, uh, but it felt and like my big thing is everyone was like looking at me. I was I was the bigger guy, and they were like, oh, you know, it must hurt the knees, you know, like oh, I would love to go run outside, but it's hard on the knees, you know what yeah, it's like. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah, it was hard on the knees for the first. Two months. Uh-huh. I used to run with all my knee braces all the bloody time. Now I I can't run with them on. You can't I, I, run I can't, with them. I, on? They're, they bother the shit out of me, oh, and yeah. it doesn't hurt. That's and you, I run like you know, just did the yeah. did the half, and just like no, my knees weren't were not the problem. Yeah, uh, it was everything else was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's got and, a full body brace coming, <laughs> except none on his knees. No, What's going great. on? <laughs> there, there is something to be said about like the more you do, the more you can do. Yeah, right? absolutely. The more ki- and, and it's that just you're conditioning yourself, and you you feel like 
this idea that you're going to go out and run and, and be, be gone for a certain amount of time and you're giving yourself a cardiovascular workout yeah. mm-hmm. or, you know, uh, whatever, whatever you think is, is happening to your body. It's not just happening to that part of your body. You're working it like you're working your entire Absolutely. kind of like mind, body, everything. Right. Yeah. And you sort of build this, this conditioning, right. Of like, okay, I've got to be organized. And I, I mean, maybe some of that comes down to the fact that you've got a busy life and then you're going to implement a training schedule within that busy life. Uh, you have no choice, but to be organized mm-hmm. with your time, right. And one, be efficient with it. The one thing too, is to keep in mind is <clears throat> I think is just taking a small step forward all the time. Like mm. you ran your marathon one step at a time. Yep. So when you are looking at, okay, I'm going to start training for a half or a full and you, and you look at the schedule or the work that needs to go in there, you start putting that extra pressure on you. Mm. Just go day by day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do your run, go out, yeah. enjoy it. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, 60 days later, you're, you're, you're at that point and you look back and you're like, oh my God, I got yeah. through this. <laughs> yep. I really did. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, and these are, these are things that, you know, help with work as well, right? Mm-hmm. When you're sitting at work and you're trying to figure out how to get to that place and you got all this work to do and you get intimidated by it or, mm-hmm. or you feel overwhelmed by it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I still have those periods, there's no doubt, but, uh, I can work through them. And I think running allows me to, to work through that a little yeah. bit better. It's kind of well, like a so. metaphor for it, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 It really is. Uh, I, I see it that way and, uh, it kind of works. It kind of works for me, yeah. I guess that way. <laughs> but, but you're right too about the more you do it, yeah. the more you feel, like you can do more. And I, and I remember my training schedule when I, when I first decided to do my marathon, the first marathon, um, which was the Chicago marathon. Uh, really? Yeah. That was your first, first was ever my marathon. First one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 39,000 people. Wow. I, you uh, you don't crazy. have to qualify for the Some Chicago of these races marathon? you do, but they do have lottery as well. And oh, I just, uh, okay. you know, and I tell my wife, oh, I just put my name in the lottery. I've got a 3% <laughs> chance of getting in. Oh my God. Boom. There you <laughs> We're, go. going, We're to going to Chicago. <laughs> and I got to run 42 kilometers. Yeah. 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 But, but you know what? It's just the experience of, of, of going through that. And, uh, you know, thinking like, I remember, um, during that training cycle, I would run like you know, 25 kilometers. And then I knew that the next week I had to run 28 kilometers. Mm-hmm. So, um, I get up to 25 and I'm getting close to 25 and I feel like I'm going to die. Like, I'm like, Oh my God, this is getting pretty, uh, uh, well maybe not at 25, but at 30, mm-hmm. like 30 was a, is a pretty important number when you're yeah. doing your training. So, so you're getting close to it. Yeah. I can do the 28. I do the 30 and then you're like, you do your 30. However, you feel like you're you've tapped out Mm -hmm. and then the following week you got to do 32. (laughs) So you're like, okay. (laughs) So now you go out and you do your first 30 and you're like, what the heck? I I did my 30. I still got two kilometers to go, but then you suffer for the last two kilometers because you're so right there. It's an indication. Your your mind's playing tricks on you, man. Like, (laughs) yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's just getting control of that. But as soon as you, as soon as you stop sweating those things and just, putting that foot in front of the other and keep going. I mean, yeah. I think you got to take it one, like, like you say, one step, one run yeah. at a time. I, I, I think one of the mistakes that maybe some people might make, and this is coming obviously from somewhat of a noob, uh, is the idea that you're, you're not, you're still not looking at that far away goal. Like even if you set yourself that far away goal, and I always thought like signing up for a race is a big one, yeah. a race that's like, eight, 10 months away yeah. because you sign up for it and then like, all right, you, you paid your ticket. you you got to show up. Right. Yep. And it's what happens between now and then. So that, that date is set. That's where you're headed. You're headed in that direction. Then focus on what's right in front of you. Yeah. If your, your training plan you've picked says five kilometers and don't worry about the 42 at the end. Exactly. Right? Just worry about that five today. Yep. And then once you conquer it, cross it off the list, go on to the next one. Take it in small bites. Yeah. Just, you gotta, you gotta break it down that way, you know? And, uh, and I think that's the best way of doing it. And, you know, after you've done so many of these, then it becomes like, it's not a, it's not too much of an Mm -hmm. issue, but you're right for, for a newbie, for, for somebody who's just starting the run. It, it definitely is. It, it looks overwhelming. Uh, for well, sure. it definitely yeah. does. <laughs> I I had like this whiteboard that I kept every single run written on, yep. and I would cross one off every time I would go. And I remember writing it at the. Uh, I was at the kitchen table. My wife was making dinner, and I'm like crossing these things, making this board together. I'm like, man, this looks like a 
a mouthful. There was like 14 weeks, three three or four runs a week, and I'm I'm just looking at it like there's yeah. no way. Like <laughs> I don't even, I can't even think of what November is gonna look like. Yeah. And I was in July or uh, or June that we were doing this. But I I you know what it it was a it was a hell of an experience, and I don't know I. It definitely haven't gotten it out of my system. I want to do more. I thought you did right no. after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I felt but, really really motivated about an hour and a half after the run because yeah. uh, <laughs> Jay Jay watched me in front of like families walking all over the place, bend over against the uh, garbage, garbage can, thrown up. I had to kind of. I love I, this I, experience. Uh, <laughs> I had to guide him around. The first I was I was uh, guiding the uh, uh, Bruna. And I was guiding him around, but he was fine. Like he was, <laughs> he was shaking a bit because it was cold. Yeah, and he's like, "Can you open up my bag of chips?" I'm like, "Yeah, open a bag of chips for him." I'm like, "I'll hold your water." <laughs> then twenty six minutes fine. later, Can I, I drink a beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah twenty six minutes later, he comes across, <laughs> and I'm like, "All right, you guys go away in the car. I'll take care of him." And I have to kind of like guide him. He's like, "Where's the washroom? <laughs> this way." Where's the washroom. I felt like I was <laughs> drunk. <laughs> like it, 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 I just stumbling all over the place, shaking. And like, yeah. what's wrong with me? Am I dying? <laughs> <laughs> and he sends a uh, he sends a text to my wife uh, saying, "Corey can't stop throwing," <laughs> and no then way. doesn't respond to her reply. <laughs> well, she didn't respond to mine for like twenty minutes. Gone to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and oh. she had just finished telling me that she was worried because I guess somebody who collapsed near a finish line just a couple weeks before that yeah. had passed yeah. away as well. Yeah. yeah. And like this we stuff actually does. <laughs> it happens. You were hoping. <laughs> no, no. It'd be an oh, interesting okay. story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah you know, first and only simple. marathon. <laughs> he finished it though. <laughs> he was a good guy. Uh, he finished a marathon. So how many have you run so far? Seven. Seven marathons. Yep. Okay. So I'm doing my eighth now uh, in Tokyo shortly. Yeah, and that's part of the six star yeah, challenge. What is the six star right? challenge? Tell us about this. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea what this is. Well, the six tra- uh, six star. It's so it's the uh, it's through Abbott's World Marathon Majors. They're all the majors on the planet, and there's six of them. And uh, the six races include um, Chicago, New York, Boston, London, England, Berlin, Germany, and uh, Tokyo. And those six make up uh, what what people refer to as the six majors in the in the marathon community or in the mar- uh, marathon racing on mm-hmm. the planet, and they're considered the six stars. Mm-hmm. So I guess when I had done Chicago, I knew that that was a, a major, but I mean, I I didn't understand, you know, uh, you know, what does a major represent, yeah. and the feeling you get, and how it's set up, and and uh, so I had done the uh, I had done that that race and um, or that marathon, and at the end, I'm like, oh man, you know what? I, I want to experience more of this stuff. Like it's crazy when you're sitting there with 39,000 people um, and everybody's got a story. Everybody's running either tra- because they are, went through a major transformation or they're running for someone or whatever. Everybody's got a story there, right? So um, there's something to be said about everybody coming together. The community. The community of, of runners coming together and running this 42 kilometers uh, together and uh you know, supporting each other and you know all that kind of stuff. It's it's actually quite powerful as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I really liked uh, the idea of um, I like traveling too. So I, I thought, hey, you know what? I like marathons. I like traveling. I, you know, what? Why don't I give myself an objective? Because mm-hmm. I like, uh, you know, I I usually like to challenge myself. And um, you know, at the time there was uh, there was about maybe two thousand people on the planet that had done uh, the six majors. Two th- only 2,000 oh, yeah. people on the planet. Yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, at the time, it might have been just a little less than that, but uh, there was more people that climbed Mount Everest at the time, which oh, is crazy. okay, yeah. So today, you've got, uh, you've got about 6,600 people on the planet that have done it, uh, and you've got about 250, I'll be pretty clear here, 252 people <laughs> that are in Canada that have done it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wow. Okay. So when you consider how many billion is how many billions of people are on the planet? Uh, seven. Right? Seven. Yeah. Give yeah. Or yeah. Take. yeah. <laughs> Give or yeah. take a billion. Yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there yeah. really isn't uh, too many people that have done the uh, six star uh, or six majors, but yeah, you're, for me, I thought you you'd know, be what? among exclusive company there. Like yeah. that's not a lot of yeah. people. Yeah. No, and when you think about it too, even uh, a lot of the professional runners, like uh, one of my uh, 
one of my favorite runners is Iliad Kipchoge. Mm-hmm. Uh, rightfully so too. Like yeah, I tried, yep. I tried to chase him Sucked down in Berlin, up. but I couldn't catch him. <laughs> hey, good, luck. <laughs> good luck trying to chase him over like what hundred meters. Like. Well, I, I think he can walk faster than I can sprint. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> it's crazy the speed uh, these guys go at. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, even a lot of those folks don't even have their six majors. So it's really, uh, I don't know. I just thought it would be a really cool challenge at mm-hmm. the time. And mm-hmm. uh, I gave myself that objective. And uh, now actually I'm about to complete my fifth major, the which fifth. is kind of blows my mind when you think about it, right? When you first start, you're like, ah, yeah, well, yeah, well by the time I die, I'll do this six. But now I'm like, hey, this has been a couple of years and I've got, uh, I'll have five done. That's it's within cool. reach. So within the two you've got left are, you said you're going to Tokyo? Tokyo. Yeah, Tokyo right? in March. So March okay. 1st, uh, if you guys are up late, uh, late at night, the night before, or if March 1st is earlier over there than over here. So uh-huh. you can check out the marathon online. That, I thought you were going to say, sense. if you're up for it, you can come with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... Yeah, yeah. Hi. You're more than we, welcome. We gave you a hat if you're going <laughs> to pay us a flight. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll send, I'll send, yeah. you, I'll send you by train. Yeah. <laughs> that works. Sure, sure. And then after Tokyo, Tokyo, you've got which one left? So I'll have Boston left. Boston, Boston yeah, left. Yeah. The elusive Boston. Did you save that one for last? Or um, it- at the start, I wasn't really thinking about keeping Boston for last. But now, uh, you know, after I did my third one, I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. you know what? I'll, I'm going to try to keep Boston for last because I had done, did Chicago and then I did New York right away. So um, New York was pretty amazing, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, well, uh, you were telling me about it uh, just before that oh, it's yes. it, like there yeah. was a lot of people, uh, a lot yeah. of people running. How many people ran that year? Uh, <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. There was about... Um, Maybe fifty-two, fifty-three thousand people. Because like that, that half I just did, it was like what thirteen hundred that took off at the half, and I was like, "This is a lot of people." This is a lot. Of <laughs> you, you can't. Even when I did Chicago there and the thirty-nine, I think it was thirty-nine thousand. But it, you don't realize when you're in the middle of a crowd that large. You know, it's like you're running with the whole city of Timmins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and New York is it's crazy. Bigger than, and yeah. you have 2 million fans. Like, it's crazy. Like, you're running down this thing. And uh, there's so many moments in these races, in these marathons that really stick out that, uh, you know, I, to this day, like, I watched the New York City Marathon. I've got it recorded on my PVR. Okay, home. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in the wintertime when I got to do a long run indoors because of the weather, Moving. I pop that on. And I can visualize, because I ran it, <laughs> Mm-hmm. I can visualize almost the whole freaking race as I'm going yeah, through this yeah. thing, right? And understanding, you know, when you get off Queensboro Bridge and you do that little turn and then you go up First Avenue in Manhattan, how crazy that place is. It's nuts. Or finishing in Central Park, right? I, I think it's <clears throat> crazy that, because, like, I've only run one and I can definitely recall, recall every turn. Like, just yeah. the, it, it's such a long race, but I can still recall turning here and how I yeah. felt at whatever point and every point in the race, but you know, you've run seven, you, you mentioned, right? Yep. And how did, like, is it all of them that you can recall, you can recall with such clarity or is it just the big ones? Yeah, I can, I can recall most of them. Um, I wouldn't say with full clarity, <laughs> but, uh, but definitely uh, like New York for some reason. And I think because I've got it recorded as well on PVR, I, mm. I remember going through that and I remember the bridge going into the, into the Bronx, mm-hmm. uh, you know, after First Avenue and coming off the Queensboro and even, you know, the start of that race is, it's just epic. Like, I mean, you start at the base of the Verrazano Bridge yeah. and you go up. The bridge is two miles long. That means you're going up for the first mile. Yeah. But I mean, you're going up this bridge and there's choppers next to you. <laughs> like I'm running and there's a <laughs> helicopter right next to me filming. Like filming? Filming the runners. And I'm like, oh my God, I felt like <laughs> I was in like in a Hollywood action movie. It was insane. <laughs> But, um, so yeah, I got to see that. And, uh, Berlin was another one too, that really, uh, that really stood out for me. Okay. It was, that was a, uh, I mean, if you think about it, um, Berlin is, uh, you know, West Berlin and East Berlin. That was, you know, there was a wall yeah, there. There was? The history. <laughs> there was a brick wall. Like, I know if you're a <laughs> age, I'm not sure. Like, we're so, we're so young. We're, we're, we're millennials, yeah, we right? No we, oh, sorry guys. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> is that Trump's wall? Yeah, I'm Trump, Trump. Oh, that, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's, well, that's the one he's trying to buy to bring. To. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. That wall was up. There was no Mexicans in West Germany. I'm just there was. 
<laughs> well, barely any. Yeah. <laughs> so it worked. So it worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> one to nothing wall. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, just uh, that one there for me had a pretty special place too because of the uh, I don't know just the history and I think with Ilya Kipchoge getting the world marathon uh, record. That's at, where at he that ran it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that same blue line he was following. Every time I uh, I look at it, I and I got pictures of this, and I'm like, <laughs> hey, I can't believe that guy ran yeah. just ahead of me. I couldn't catch him. <laughs> <laughs> it's something to feel a part of that, though, yeah. right? And like, um, yeah. you you talked a little bit about the community aspect. That's one thing that I found about running. Like, even, uh, and, you know, we've been talking about this for the past few weeks, uh, and uh, definitely you've been heavily involved in organizing. Mm. Uh, this is the weekly park runs Absolutely. at uh, Gillies Lake, which... Every time we do a podcast, we encourage people to oh, awesome. always come yeah. out. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. For that. I don't know how impactful it is. Not so many. Apparently, the demographic that watches beer and bullshit isn't the running type. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> hey, man, there's, on, there's hope. Get come, on, come on, come <laughs> on. Um, but yeah, with uh, even with those weekly park runs, like the fact that uh, people come out and everybody's just uh, like you never see anybody come out to this in a bad mood, right? Oh. Like, Ugh, it's such a terrible day. Like those those people tend to stay home, I guess, right? Yeah, <laughs> Every, I find like the running community is nothing but positivity and. Like, not a cult-like positivity, but, like, a positivity, a real good positivity. Like a good Scientology you know? type Yes, like yes, Scientology. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Not cult-like, but Scientology-like. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's yeah. really into it for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, it's great. It, the, the only thing that I've found, and this is where I, I think the... You're going to shit on it now? Is no, 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 no. I'm not going to yep, shit on it at all. the only thing. <laughs> only thing is... However. No, it, I, I find it to <laughs> yeah, be a, a little bit... Uh, insular in the sense that there's not a lot of um, like people who are non runners never have never ever run before. It's kind of an intimidating thing to to get into, right? Because I the agree. majority of people who do it regularly have been doing it for a long time, yeah. uh, have experience of maybe run some of these longer races and so on. Are usually in probably a little bit better shape. So I think that barrier to entry is always seems like it's there, right? Well, it's it's definitely intimidating for for somebody that hasn't ran yet, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. um, or maybe they've ran in the past, but now they're, you know, and I, and I know a few folks right now that are actually just starting to walk again. Oh, not that they're walking like I mean they can walk, but I'm talking about they want to do a 5K again, and they they're starting to walk the and 5K, walk and then they're they're hoping to transition into a run soon. And, okay. Um, but that's the, the beauty about park run is that it doesn't matter if you're a walker or runner or mm-hmm. if you run, you know, a 5k in sub 20 or, uh, not, not degrees, but I guess that would work really well up here too. <laughs> yeah, you can do uh, both. 20 minutes. <laughs> My, uh, sub 20 in sub 20. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. There's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a, it's a very inclusive, like we really want everybody to know that, you know, just come out and have fun. Like mm-hmm. last week was a great week uh, to be honest with you, because we had a couple of walkers as well. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, all the runners had finished and, uh, our, our, our group, our volunteer group actually walked up to the, to our, uh, to our, um, our tail walker. Oh, really? So we came and met them and then we kept, and then we walked all the way back to the finish line and everybody kind of felt great. Like it was nice. And we chatted for a bit, you know, as we're putting the stuff yeah. away and, uh, uh, but, but it really is, um, you know, we really wanted to do something in the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Jeremy Lamott is, uh, is the one who had uh, started this mm-hmm. and of course, uh, you know, I, I helped out a little bit there, but it was really uh, his brainchild, and mm-hmm. he he really wanted to, um, you know, allow people to come and <clears throat> and just come and run or walk even, yeah, and yeah. just have a schedule every week. I mean, we we started the Timmins Running Club mm-hmm. for that, right? With runs on Tuesdays and Thursdays and on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, but to get back, to that one, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember seeing yeah, you guys there. <laughs> Actually, the only run I Wait think... Wait a second, we weren't invited. I'm <laughs> saying nobody will show up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, the only run I think I was invited for you guys is your beer run. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a common theme here, actually. Yeah. I'm starting to see... Yeah, this true. is good. This yeah, is good. Yeah, we, we enjoy beer. And we were supposed uh, to release a pod b- of us running the one time. Yeah, that, that one didn't work out that well. <laughs> You're going to do a podcast while running, <laughs> and uh, you can... Uh, we technically well, did one. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're, we keep throwing around this idea that we're going to we're gonna do a running podcast like where we do the beer run but yep. we podcast just from both breweries i think pot like actually podcasting 
while running is kind of a tough one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until we can run well. (laughs) (laughs) It's just a lot of panting, you know? And it's going to be audio only. (laughs) What kind of podcast is this? It's going to sound like, um, (laughs) what was the old Adam Sandler bit? Uh, Is this sex or weightlifting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam Sandler. Oh, my God. I thought you guys said you didn't know. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Millennials know Adam Sandler? What the heck, man? It's crazy. But but no, the, the positivity of like something like Park Run, um, I I think is a good uh, kind of entry portal portal Absolutely. to anybody who's like trying to get into it. Yeah. And anybody like the common excuse I've always heard from anybody that I ask, like, hey, do you want to like come out for a run? Yep. They go, oh, I can't keep up. You know, I, I'm not. Yeah, I can't go for as long as you. It's like no nobody cares. Like most of the people. Either they want somebody to run with, and this is what I'd always tell somebody if I'd ask them to go for a run, they would say, oh, I can't. Well, if if I wanted to go faster, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't invite you. I wouldn't invite I wouldn't you, invite you to come, exactly. right? If I'm inviting you to come, it's because, like, I want to run with you. Yeah. You know? So it's this this idea that you're you're going to be disappointed or you're going to be holding anybody back, especially at something like Park Run, right? Yeah. The more people that come out, the more, and this is the same kind of thing we were hoping to develop with our, our beer runs, is yeah, yeah. the more people that come out, the more you have groups of people that sort of run at the same pace, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. And, uh, and everybody has their group that they can sort of run with. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, anyone who's given it a shot knows that it's, yeah. they, it's a good thing. What I, oh, I Absolutely, and and I agree wholeheartedly with you, man. Like uh, people, they 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 still feel intimidated. You can tell them, hey, don't you know? We'll, and and I don't worry. Don't worry about time. Don't worry about this. Mm-hmm. We're just going out, man. We're just enjoying a run. But uh, at the end of the day, it's still it's <laughs> yeah. still a little tough. And and I and I tell you, I used to run with my my wife. Uh, started running at one point, and uh, um, it didn't take long for her to say, like, okay, Mark, that's enough, <laughs> 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 because. I mean, we're running at her pace, and I have no problems running at her pace. No. And but she feels so much pressure, and I'm like, oh my god, you don't have to like. No, and no. my daughter, I ran, uh, you know, my daughter ran a half, a couple half, half marathons, and uh, so I ran the first half marathon with her, and uh, uh, you know, I'm sort of like a springy gazelle, and she's like struggling, like. So the, when when we were supposed to run our second uh, half marathon together, she's like, "No, she's I'm like, not no, doing no. that enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't. You're too cheery. Everybody wants to punch you in the yeah. face." <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you've run if you've run a uh, seven marathons like you, and then uh, you're you're going to run a half, and especially if you're not running for like a PR or anything yeah. like that, you're you're gonna you're gonna be sitting there smiling, and you're gonna have a lot of people who are gonna be pretty oh, mad yeah. at you. <laughs> don't, don't jump cones. <laughs> A couple of things I've learned. Don't uh, jump cones. Don't swerve around cones. Uh, oh, <laughs> dear Lord. There's probably somebody sitting in the dark like, I'm going to catch that yeah. car and I'm going to smack him. I'm going <laughs> to smack him. So anyways, yeah, yeah. we got... Uh, so I learned my lesson that way a little bit too uh, there. But 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 I understand. Like, I understand what they're saying. But uh, at the end of the day, it's really, you know, just come out and socialize. It's yeah. a social sport. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Actually, uh, tomorrow we'll we're gonna, we're gonna have hot chocolate, man. It's gonna oh, be awesome. Yeah. Sweet, yeah. Sweet. I actually have to go now. I'm upset. You there have to. I've been sleeping in for the last few weeks. Okay, I thought you were saying have you to have to go. Like, no, you I have, have to, to go to the, the podcast because uh, yeah, my coworker's going, so I kind of got uh, oh, there tricked go. into going. Ah, yeah. which well, who's coming? Gonna Jamie. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, who can? Who ran? Bulls. Yeah, Jamie yeah. Burns. Jamie Burns, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll totally take one. Yeah. Uh, but one thing I found about the uh, the park run, though, and like you know, we you talk about you know people are are scared and kind of intimidated, but like the one thing I've realized too with the running culture is that you know you have the park run too. And, uh, don't worry, we'll just let's turn a, let's just make as much noise as we can while we do this. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, awesome. Uh, can, can you wash mine too? <laughs> good pod, good pod. Uh, it's like yeah, some people are faster, some people are slower. Like you know, I've seen you run, and I'm I, and you'll come in and finish at. 27 minutes because you're running with somebody and which you can do under 20 but you're just going out with you know you're running with somebody and but also like every time every, when everyone finishes a park run everyone sticks around and cheers on yes. whoever's coming in to finish yeah. and no one is out there to to show you up yeah d- 
I do see, I do find like some of the people who are, might be more competitive. I see how they, they are like, oh, you know, like I want to beat them, beat them, beat them, like your mom. Uh, and that's just yeah, not my mom. Did you say your mom? That's not, mom. not just a, your mom a joke, but your mom. Yeah. I, I've uh, seen, I've seen your, I think, I think I'm pretty sure that's your mom that finishes the park run in a dead sprint there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. that's her. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Super competitive. <laughs> and she'll be upset 100%. that, like, oh, whoever beat me or passed me, and I'm yeah, upset. She's, oh, yeah. She gets legit mad. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's like, but like, uh, it's, it's, crazy and like everyone's super like supportive any all the runs i've done so far you know like if safe i'm you know like i did that that duathlon where i was kind of just dragging ass by the end and i'm like i just gotta get through this there would be people passing me and they're like you got this keep going keep going, keep going. Yeah. and one person like i was uh, i was kind of dragging ass and i was like kind of passing one person then they passed me and i passed yeah. them again and she got past me again and then she's like and I was p- kicking up, uh, picking up, and I said, "Keep like I was yelling at her, like keep going, keep going, you got yeah, it." Then yeah. she's like, "Let's go together. We're going to the same pace. Let's at least push each other." Yeah, so yeah. we kept going. She ended up dying at the end, and I just kept going. But uh, <laughs> but it was like everyone <laughs> couldn't keep up. Oh, sorry. But everyone's like, I find it, everyone's <laughs> good race though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good job. But everyone finds like everyone supports each other, even when you're racing against them. Everyone's like, "No, let's do this." Nobody, nobody's trying to beat the other one. Really, no. that's it's, that's no. what I mean by the. Kid community of running mm-hmm. in these large races yeah mm-hmm. there's some focused individuals that go but at the end of the day when the struggle is real and you're battling yeah. at yeah. the end like you did your marathon i i i'm sure somebody tapped you on the back at oh. the end okay, okay oh, yeah. you got this a buddy. bunch come of them on, a bunch from past them That's actually the, yeah. the last tap on the back stop, stop puking the guy the, gar- <laughs> the garbage the is full <laughs> the guy tapped me on the back and he said get some salt into you but yes. <laughs> that, that was that was the tap i remember <laughs> you didn't yeah. take any of that that uh couldn't. chicken broth it was awesome no i couldn't it was I great couldn't, i couldn't keep anything down i could uh uh, sip on some Gatorade when we got back to the hotel, and then the hot shower still freezing, still shaking when I got there. I think you were naked underneath the blankets, shaking. Oh, that's right, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. It wasn't my proudest moment. You know, it didn't feel so majestic. <laughs> you know what? Uh, when I finished London, I kind of felt a little bad that way too, and and even Berlin. Like, I mean, and plus I was I was carrying some injuries too at that point, mm. but. Um, it was amazing. I didn't want any water. I didn't want, and usually I like a nice cold beer after mm-hmm. a run. Oh my God. That's kind of like pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's a good way, a good way to congratulate yourself. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know what I found is an apple. <laughs> I, I looked at like, you, you know, you finished a race, they yeah. give you your goodie bag and stuff. I looked down and I'm like, Oh, I know. I don't want this water. I don't, there's a beer and Oh, I need this apple. <laughs> so, an apple of all things. So I'm things. eating an apple. I'm like, okay, well, it's, it's an apple. So <laughs> and it's stained too, too down. Much. It stayed down. Uh, yeah, yeah. I find I've, I've liked the apples and bananas every time. I'm just, yeah. I'm going to eat these right away. Yeah. A banana seems like it makes sense to me because like oh, potassium yep. and just yeah, absolutely. like replenishing electrolytes there. I The <laughs> apple seems kind of heavy to me, like, uh, but. But at, that's mm-hmm. at the end of the race. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the race, yeah. I was not going to be able yeah. to keep anything down, but uh, <laughs> I couldn't even keep the liquid inside me. Like, it was just <laughs> brutal. So, well, my question, uh, sure. when you run, because I, I, you know, still quite new to this, uh, yep. you know, I've only done what, a couple halves and a, a duathlon. Uh, I first went without drinking water or taking anything. <laughs> eating anything doing anything <laughs> just going have an apple and banana before the race i think with the yogurt uh which seems like a weird combination uh yeah. but then uh so then that the half people were like oh you know like you know you guys and whoever yeah. else everyone had their gel packs and everyone had this and i was like you know what i'm gonna try one because i was pissed with the first half marathon how i kind of died a couple k af- like i was slowing down and i just i yeah. thought i had enough time and enough energy and i would have finished on a, at a better time but i kind of misjudged it like oh, you know, I'm going to try one of these. So I grabbed one of these these maple friggin' yeah. uh, pouches. Yes. Tried it at like 17, 18k, and I was like, wow, that's just like I couldn't <laughs> taste. It. it wasn't even like was so it honestly, the maple syrup. I didn't even feel anything. Like maybe it, it helped me get through. Like I don't know because I just was, was that like an endurance tap or yeah, uh, yeah, 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 that's yeah. the one. Yeah. I just wanted to try it and I'll just to see what it was like. And I just thought it was like it was just thick. Like trying to swallow, like I, I literally just drank water and spat it up because I was like, yeah. I don't like this. Then I tried one of those energy chews, which was just like a, a chew of sand, and I, I <laughs> spat sand. half of it out. Like I can't do this. <laughs> and I was like, so do you take anything? Like, and what do you? Do, yeah, do you, absolutely. Because I know some people do do the prunes or just do like fruit, whatever. Yeah. Do you use anything, or are there any special things that you like or brands you like? 
Yeah, well, actually, I've been using uh, Endurance Tap, actually, yeah. for my last couple of marathons. But I've always, when I run a marathon, I've always got, I do have some GI issues with any of that stuff. Mm. Um, it doesn't get me at 20 or 30, but it gets me at 33, 34, 35. So um, the Endurance uh, the endurance Tap uh, is, is typically my go-to. Mm. Uh, however, for Tokyo, I've uh, switched up what I'm going to be taking. I'm taking the uh, Morton. Yep. And uh, they've got a, um, they, and they're working on it. Well, they've got a patent uh, application in for the process that you actually absorb these things. I guess they've got it wrapped in a in a compound that allows it to go through your stomach, so that in your intestines, it'll get to your intestines, and you mm-hmm. can absorb it much much better. Okay. okay. So there's, um, uh, so I'm going to be trying that product, and um, actually, all my long runs are going to be. Uh, you know, I'll With be that using well. that product yeah, uh, yeah. so that I can train my body and see, but um, it's what typically uh, like Iliad Kipchoge uses this. Uh, there's a slew of runners that use it yeah. uh, and uh, professional athletes that use it. And, you know, for me, it's just because of my GI. I just want to make yeah. sure I'm fine. And um, I, I find I get, I, I do have those issues uh, mm-hmm. later in the race and it's a common issue with many runners mm-hmm. i don't know if you had that issue but you had the throw <laughs> <That's> issue <laughs> some kind of issue <laughs> yeah. but I, but you've i've seen people like pull off the side of the road and like uh, they, yeah they're going oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that makes complete sense like but this particular product that you're talking about yeah. um it's so the idea is that it bypasses your stomach and it gets absorbed while in your in intestines. Your intestines, exactly, uh, and it, it tends to quicker, uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I, you know, I'm, I'm giving it a like they say, uh, giving it a whirl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll yeah, see how it goes. Shot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, a yeah. shot. But uh, from what, uh, like on my Instagram, I've got a lot of runners that I follow, especially uh, in the European uh, place, because I mean, I just ran two marathons in Europe, so I. I have a few uh, running buddies in that area mm-hmm. and uh, they, they're using that product and they swear by it as well. Okay. So I'm going to give that a shot. But in terms of quantity, that's something that um, when I was in New York, I met a fella by the name of Dean Carnassi's. I don't know if you know who that's Dean son of a bitch. <laughs> that's son of a bitch. <laughs> that's son of a bitch. <laughs> Anyways, uh-huh. that, that guy is, uh, he's an ultra marathoner yep. and uh, he's actually written several books, uh, including uh, Run to Sparta. So have you read? No, the, I have not. It's a great book. You yeah, read. Run it's to a, Sparta. Run to Sparta. Okay. It's a story about it's a story about Philippides and how he ran from Marathon to Athens. Yeah, the the origin story of the marathon. Yeah, it, okay. well, kind of. Yeah, that's exactly it. But there's there's a there's a backstory to that where he ran from um, Athens to um, the no not Persia to um, oh my god, the name escapes me now. The Persians lost the war. Thermopylae. To... They, they lost to the Spartans. The Spart- in, in... Oh, run to Sparta. My God, he ran. To... <laughs> he ran from... <laughs> on, on, oh, on, my on, God. What's in this lost beer? Lost to the Spartans. <laughs> uh, first fought them with Thermopylae. That's where the, the 300 <laughs> movies from. And then the uh, Persians eventually lost on uh, Plantea. So Philippides, Philippides, or whichever way you pronounce it, I got some, I got some French in me, eh? So I got. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, ran from Athens to Spartan, spoke to the Spartans, then he had to run back. But that distance is about 150 miles. So he ran 150 there, run 150 back, then had to run to Marathon for the battle that was going on there, and then Marathon back to Athens. Okay. So it's not the marathon distance is kind of <laughs> so it's not okay he ran 42k and dropped dead which was the yeah you, he doesn't run story, 42, right? yeah that's the story but th- to be honest he ran 152 or 150 150 back 42 and or it, to be fair didn't they all run and didn't like all battles take like all <laughs> like oh they're 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 marching they'll be here in three months yeah but i'm yeah. sure some of these timelines weren't exactly perfect. but he was running like a <laughs> nine minute pace there so uh <laughs> yeah through the mountains and all of I saw his Strava. And isn't also... The- <laughs> yeah. No, I don't believe it. He's not on Strava. Uh, uh, uh. Also, like, isn't the Greek Isles, like, you have to swim and take a boat for a bunch of places. No? Like, you're not just <laughs> running this. I'm just saying. Well, that's where the triathlon come from. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just to get back to your point, um, <clears throat> I met him... Um, anyways, I... Oh, yeah. We were talking about something still. Yeah, saying. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, about nutrition yeah. and drinking and stuff uh, in a marathon and... Uh, um, I guess uh, when I did New York, I met him there, and we had a chat about uh, what he actually mm-hmm. took when he was uh, when he's running marathons and stuff. But I mean, he runs—he typically runs two hundred milers. 
Okay. Uh, he doesn't like doing the 300 milers because the third, that means that he has to be up for a third night and he usually falls asleep and he doesn't like running while he's sleeping, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> which, uh, I mean, <laughs> I can understand. Yeah. Guys, is, he's kind of a softy, but yeah, I mean, like. yeah, we'll, we'll give him a, we'll give him a pass though. And, uh, anyways, he, um, he hardly drinks anything and ta- he doesn't take any gels or anything oh, like yeah. that. So I started, um, limiting wow. my, my, uh, my, water and intake dairy, and my intake as well. And not that I don't take, like, I mean, I do take some, there's no doubt, mm-hmm. but I mean, instead of every, th- every three kilometers, like, uh, for the first part of the race, I'll go every six kilometers and I'll have water and then I'll have, uh, you know, a Gatorade drink or whatever it is. And then I'll do my first gel at, uh, at 18 and then maybe 28 or something like that. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. off I go. Uh, but I will tell you that it's still not perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. still having, a, still having a hard time. So I'm still <laughs> figuring out the, uh, the nutrition piece. piece. Yeah. Yeah. But I can easily go out and run. Um, uh, like I run with, uh, with a couple of groups there and, uh, Mario Ciccone and, uh, Brian, mm-hmm. uh, Brian Marks. And we do our runs and if we do our long runs, anything uh, under 22 K, uh, I don't normally bring any water and stuff. So they mm-hmm. keep calling me a camel and <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to drink anything. Uh, I kind of don't, but, Speaking but I do fuel up before I go though. Like I yeah. do have like, uh, I'll usually have a good grain uh, in the morning with some fruits and, mm-hmm. uh, and off I go and that sustains me. And that's enough. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Speaking yeah. of hydration, can I top you off? And, uh, Jay might, we might want to talk about what we're drinking tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So actually this is probably the first time in a while we're not drinking something local. True. A long while. Sorry guys. Now, it's would you like to try some of our the other offerings? Yeah, I'll there. try yeah. that guy. All right. Sure. All right. So our first one we had was the uh, Sawdust City Lone Pine IPA, which was th- won the uh, 2014 Golden Cap a uh, Golden Tap Award and the 2015 Golden Tap Award for uh, Brewmaster Choice. So I guess uh, it's a bit of a, a winner here. Uh, but yeah, it's a uh, I can't remember now. Size an IPA, uh, pretty hoppy. Not too, not too shabby. Uh, actually, for you know, I'm not as we know. I'm, I'm not an IPA guy, and uh, I actually don't mind it at That's all. Why I got it? Six point five percent, I believe it says. Yep. And yeah, no, pretty solid. It says you should store it at three to five degrees Celsius and serve it at five to eight degrees Celsius, or in a Red Bull fridge, or in a Red Bull fridge. <laughs> Recommended with a pint uh. snifter or I, IPA glass, or in that. <laughs> or in whatever glass we have. <laughs> so actually, no, pretty solid. Uh, then uh, we also have the Ebb and Flow by Muskoka Brewery. So the uh, these two competing mm. breweries that are just down the street from each other, really. Yeah. Uh, or down the highway from each other. Uh, That's the first one. Kind of a low percentage. Uh, yeah, very. Is it 2.4? Is that what that is? Yeah, 2.4%. Yeah. So it's yeah, almost like a surprising. rattler almost. Yeah. Uh, but no, I'm a, 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 I'm a sour, fran- uh, sour fan, so this is a sour. Pretty decent. Uh, they're calling it. It's uh, yeah. I guess this is new. It's only from 2018, so pretty decent. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It tastes like good. Ebb and flow, good yeah. For sure. no, this uh, we were talking about the beer run. Oh. When we go to the breweries, this is my choice for yeah. what to drink. Whatever sour they've got on tap, that's like that's what you. That's get. what I like yeah. to go. Okay. It's not. Yeah. It's not overly carbonated. It's not heavy, yeah, yeah. and it's kind of refreshing too. That sour taste because uh, I'm pretty sure they're all brewed with some kind of fruit right yep. well it yeah. kind of wakes you up too eh? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you don't want to drink like the the first stuff yeah. that we were drinking the uh lone pine ipa to drink that and then go for a oh. run like that'll s- stick to your ribs you know like, yeah kind of chewing it <laughs> what did we have right at the, the mule oh it was yes. the one sour god i gotta find it now after the marathon in yep. hamilton we went to a place called the mule downtown Hamilton, and uh, they had this amazing collective arts um, multi-berry sour. Yeah. On yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. It was fantastic. And it was out of this world good. So we, we got to try to find uh, find some of that yeah. and get our hands on it. Actually, was it the are, Raz? No, it wasn't Are you raspberry. guys doing the 30K around the bay? Around March? the bay? Okay, when is that? It's the last weekend of March. Last weekend of March? Mm-hmm. I feel... You know what? I'm going to be coming back from a... Uh, hot trip at that point so uh okay. i could um i don't know last week in march i feel like it would be doable because yeah, yeah, a 30k yeah. run i feel like is a good i don't know i'd like to do another fall marathon yeah. next year so maybe like having a 30k in march is kind of a good 
place to to be. It's a good launch. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess <laughs> so. Thirty sure. k. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. mean a good start. Definitely oh, yeah, have yeah. to train up yeah, to that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, no. I, I I feel like that'd be that'd be fun. Hamilton was a good, like a great time. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought the the event. Um, I think one of the things because the first half marathon I ever did. I've only done three of these races, right? So yeah. the first one I ever did was the Toronto Waterfront yeah. half marathon, and this sort of speaks a little bit to the atmosphere that you were talking about when you go to these big events, right? Absolutely. I was like just completely overwhelmed. It was amazing. It, it, like that's sort of what got me to continue doing this because mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I I had a great time here. And uh, then I found, like, going to other events, I'm like, oh, okay, they're not all that huge, <laughs> no, you know. <laughs> you go to the expo at this thing, and it's like, whoa, man, you're looking around wall to wall. And then the other one's like, oh, okay, that's is some vendors. You Five know, minutes cool. and you're done. Exactly. And you're, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So Where's you guys want to go uh, get some food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where's the food vendor here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I had tossed around the idea of doing the waterfront marathon, yeah. the full one, uh, in, in the fall. You had mentioned that the Mont Tremblant is, uh, is a yeah. nice one. You just did I, that one. I just did the, uh, yeah, it's called the uh, Stenay du Nord, and okay. you, you go from Val David uh, to Saint-Jérôme. Mm. And uh, I actually, I'm going to do it again next year. And uh, we have a group of us actually going, so it'd be awesome to have, have you guys out there. Jay's gonna run. It. Jay, he's gonna run the full next year. I think he did say at the starting of the he podcast did. that he was gonna probably do one, do. right? We'll probably end up doing it. It's on tape now, Jay. Right. Yeah. Just I'm so you know, I don't think there's any tape. But just so you know, Jay, there's a 220 meter drop from start to finish. Okay. So that's kind of nice. So you can just, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can just put just rollerblades on. Just just put rollerblades on. I'll get my Heelys on and just kind of. <laughs> not your Heelys. Oh my God. Those still exist. Uh, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but sorry, but before we move on too quickly, I definitely want to get back to the beer that we're drinking because yes. um, we usually kind of go around the table. Everybody gives their, oh, their impressions oh, and their oh, okay. rating on the beers that we're drinking because uh, we'll give a. Out of ten rating, I guess. Out five but, or out of ten? What do we usually give? Um, I don't remember. I, guess, I don't know. I, I always matters. this. Yeah, it's been a little while. We haven't been as five, consistent on the. The podcast. problem with giving a five rating, like out of five, is that everything ends up being about three, three and a half. You know, like because yeah. you're like, oh, it's like three and a half, yeah. four. But like, what's re- like it's the kind ten of gives you more options because you can even say like nine point four. Right, like there's <laughs> there's degrees of yeah. degrees of nine and degrees of eight. That's why some people like Fahrenheit more than Celsius because there's more of a noticeable difference. Like between a 21 degree Celsius and a 22 degree Celsius, there's about you know two and a half degrees of Fahrenheit. Right. So like you know that you can actually be a bit more precise with Fahrenheit, even though it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't that make any freezing's sense. at minus what doesn't make yeah. that 30 and. Minus thirty is minus thirty. Like that. That doesn't make nope, any sense. No, I'll never buy in. I'm I'm into the Celsius. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> but that said, uh, sure. Jay, what do you think oh, of? Go uh, Which my uh, so I don't quite remember too much the IPA for an IPA, uh, the the Lone Pine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually didn't mind, it and I I can I have a hard time putting IPAs back to start off with. So actually, if I'm going to give it on a, a scale of ten for an IPA, I'm going to give it a good eight. A sure. good eight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, solid okay. eight. Because I actually. Did not mind. Did not feel like an IPA, uh, or like it was. Th- there was it was some hops to it, but it did not uh, didn't give you that back of the uh, cheek yeah. kind of hardness, yeah. And which I people like. I'm not a fan of that, so I actually enjoy that. One. So maybe if you're an IPA fan, that might not be the IPA for you. I liked it. Yeah. Uh, then for the sour uh, mm-hmm. by Muskoka, the Ebb and Flow, uh, actually pretty pretty solid. <laughs> uh, it's it's easy like. I don't know. Maybe it's because I I know it's a uh, you know what two point six, and I know it's kind of like you can almost call this a rattler almost yeah. to a degree. Yeah. I think I'm losing some points on it. The taste up there, I like the taste for a sour, is actually really easy. Like if uh, people who don't like beer, like s- s- some friends or some ladies who might not want who maybe like a white wine, this would be an easy one to have. Yeah, but no, to f- for good good point. Just because I'm, I'm you know comparing it to the other thing else, I'm. I'm going to go maybe for a six and a half, seven. Okay. Okay. Mm, there we go. All right. And Mark, what were your uh, impressions on the, our offerings for tonight? Yeah, um, absolutely. Well, the Lone Pine, um, I enjoyed it quite well, <laughs> actually. Yeah. I didn't mind the IPA. I'm uh, an IPA fan as well. That's typically the type of beer that I'll uh, that I'll order when I go out. Um, I'd probably give it a nine. Oh, yeah. I nice. actually didn't mind it at all. Nice. Um, the alcohol content is a little higher on yeah. it, but hey. 
it's typical of IPAs, yeah. right? And it's, I've been to Belgium, so all, yeah. all the percentages is fine. <laughs> the land of beer. Yeah, and um, in the ebb and flow, uh, fresh, yes, sour, yes, but uh, kind of not my taste. I'm, right. uh, if it's not a sour guy, uh, it's hard to, yeah, yeah, it's hard to get I'm, into I'm not, sours. I'm not a sour too much of a sour guy, uh, but um, but it's still fairly good. I would probably give it a probably a six. A six, okay, yeah, yeah. right, yeah, nice. myself. Yeah, and and we had sort of adopted at one point that we would rate them Based according on to the type of beer that they are. Right, like um, we we got to a point where we were trying different types of the same class of beer. Oh, yeah. like, so let's say, a lot of sours. So like trying to, compa- yeah. trying to compare a sour to an IPA is kind of a difficult thing because yeah. they're really like apples and oranges, right? So, um, yeah, it's, a, it, it's, it's hard to kind of put your, your finger on it if it's not mm-hmm. the type of beer that you, you reach for, right? Yeah. Yeah. So as far as my impressions on the IPA, um, I, I liked it too. I think, uh, Jay, what you said about it was kind of on the nose. Like it, right. it's, uh, everything I do say <laughs> everything on the nose. It's, <laughs> on it's perfect. Perfect description. All right. So the <laughs> podcast is over. Uh, <laughs> no, the, uh, the Lone Pine IPA I thought was, uh, well balanced. It, um, it was still strong. It still felt like it had bite, but it didn't have that kind of overwhelming bite that some IPAs that, where the like, hop heads go yeah, for them. Yeah, I, I, I kind of got a feeling that some people, um, some of the pe- some of the breweries that are making some of these IPAs, they're making them just to be obnoxiously strong. Like, yeah. uh, it's oh, it's, try this. Like, like people yeah. are chasing that that yeah. hoppy feel, and they're gonna they're going for it. Kind of like when. Um, certain uh companies start making hot sauces yeah. like uh, how hot can you make this right and yeah. it's not, not about it's no longer about <laughs> flavor, flavor or anything, it's yeah. just about like uh how much can we make people go oh my god that's strong you know yeah. but uh no this didn't have that this was well balanced it, it tasted it tasted really good as far as like uniqueness it it didn't really give me any kind of um uh, I don't know. It didn't. It, I didn't find it that interesting as far as the flavor profile. But uh, as far as uh, just it being a good drinking IPA, I could see myself drinking more of these. It's kind of like a little bit stronger session IPA, right? Like the Master Beta yeah. or something like that. It's it's got that same balanced feel and taste. It's just you're really strong, going into this one, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going hard. <laughs> and the I was sa- thinking the same thing. I'm like, wow, he's really, uh, he's engaged here. This is awesome. And the sour is good. <laughs> <laughs> no, as far as the sour goes, uh, I, I liked oh, it a solid. lot. If you would have stopped there, it actually would have been pretty good. Yeah. That would have been pretty hilarious. <laughs> no, the sour is good, though. I, I think I liked it more than you guys did. Um, it's, it's refreshing and like, I've really taken the sours recently mm-hmm. in the past yeah. couple of years. So I, I really like this one. And lately lower alcohol content has been my friend. <laughs> yeah, so, I know. Uh, I'm very, very happy with, uh, <laughs> with drinking a 2.4%, uh, beer. Not well, right. You can have more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we were drinking tonight. Again, the Sawdust Brewing Company, uh, sorry, Sawdust City Brewing Company, Lone Pine IPA. And the Muskoka Breweries Ebb and Flow Session Sour. So both yeah. great places to visit to have a little bite and uh, have a drink. So yeah, I've done them. Uh, You've done them both. Times. Oh, a few times. A few times. Yeah, oh, yeah. lucky guy. So you don't stop at Weber's anymore. You stop at Never uh, stop Muskoka Weber's. Beer. No, uh. no I have one of those <laughs> instead. And uh, we've also done a couple, couple of the other ones. So like, but we also once we've done. So when I was in Windsor doing my masters, and Paula was still here, instead of one of us traveling. All the way to the other to the other. We was, let's just meet up oh. halfway. Meet up in Gravenhurst. That's not a bad and idea. Go have. We would spend the night just going out, have a bunch of beers at one of the three or four in the area uh, breweries, and then just yeah. And it's a perfect place to meet up too, right? It's it not nice it, like yeah. are you gonna yeah. you know drive to Toronto or exactly. drive to North Bay, right? Yeah. Like yeah. it's uh, the Muskoka's. Yeah. Nice and essentially, it was a halfway point. Yeah. It was yeah. Essentially, we leave same time. We both get there roughly within half an hour of each other, so it was perfect. Nice. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It is a nice area. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I hear they have a is it Gravenhurst that's got a nice marathon? Uh triathlon. No, triathlon in Gravenhurst. It's um or Bracebridge. Is it Bracebridge that has the They're all the same place really, what? aren't they? But yeah, one of them one of them hosts the marathon and one ho- one of them hosts the triathlon. Okay. Um but yeah, one of those places, so it's gotta be nice anyways. Uh, but I, I kind of want to get back to to the running stuff. Sure, that we were sure, no problem. About. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you was 
you know, you're on the cusp of finishing this six star yeah. challenge thing, right? Yeah. And you're talking at the beginning of this about having red board and run and, and this sort red. of getting yeah. it, getting into this. Like, do you see yourself running ultras after this? Absolutely. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're getting it. You're gonna get into that, right? You're gonna get. Is my wife gonna yeah, be listening to this? She's, <laughs> she's gonna be so upset. No, uh, off the she's never gonna off see the it. grid runs and all that. There, no, the yeah, uh, yeah that too. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be actually kind of something pretty neat to try. Yeah. yeah. No, um, there's definitely, uh, you know what? There's so many different types of runs out there now, and uh, all over the planet as well, and. Uh, you know, once the six majors are done now, uh, there's opportunities to run a marathon on every continent. There's an mm. uh, opportunity to run ultras. There's uh, um, there's one ultra that I've got in mind that I definitely would love to do in my lifetime, and that's the Comrades down in South Africa. So it's 89, um, 89 kilometers, depending on what year you go. One year it's 89 kilometers, the next year it's 91 kilometers or whatever. Oh, okay. Just the alternate the course? Yeah. Well, it's still a point to point, but on the way back from this point, for some reason, they I, I think there's a detour or there's something that causes that there's a little bit more mm-hmm. distance. But I think regardless, it's still, <laughs> excuse me, it's still a great marathon. Mm. Or it ultra marathon. Yeah. It's, uh, you know what? And, uh, Called the Comrades, and it's uh, you know for just communists. So that's, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it's you, to honor. You have to be part of part of the socialist club. <laughs> yeah, it's a communist. <laughs> Sorry, guys, now you know me. There we go. <laughs> hey, comrades. Oh, <laughs> comrade. Hey, comrade. Man. But it's uh, really to honor the uh, fallen soldiers in the South African Army and stuff, and they've mm-hmm. they've built this, and um, it's actually been in existence for oh my God, uh, maybe fifty years, sixty years. Really? Yeah, it's for a long time. We'd have to go check again there, but. Uh, They've had it for a while. Hmm. And uh, that's one of the ones that I'd like to do. Um, Marathon des Sables? No? You're going to do that Marathons one? Marathon des Sables? Yeah, you're not going like to do that the, one? Or are you going to try that one? Yeah, you're going to try that yeah. one? I don't know. I, you know, I, you're something cool. <laughs> it's, you're going uh, to be recorded now. And yeah. I know. That's, that's why I'm like, uh, I got to end up in this. Libya. You're all confused. What's happening? <laughs> got to eat, eat bats. bats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Marathon des Sables, too, is. Uh, is uh is something that i've always thought of i I, like i haven't really processed or gave uh, how can i say this i you know internally i kind of process these things right and i'm like okay yeah i think i can you know the comrade suits me i think that'd be kind of cool marathon des salb i've met actually when i was in new york i met a couple of runners that had done the marathon des salb as well and uh, got to talking to them and it actually kind of piqued my interest a lot as well. <laughs> there, but there's so many of these things. Yeah. I mean, uh, and look at the ultras that are happening. There's a huge boom happening in the ultra racing uh, community mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot more people, right? A lot of people have done marathons now and they're like, okay, well, what's next? Yeah. yeah. So uh, so these these ultras are coming up. And uh, uh, actually, maybe props to, there's one in uh, Sault Ste. Marie, uh, Jason Parrott uh, from Timmins here. Mm-hmm. He just ran... Uh, 83 kilometers. Yeah, clones, yeah. He was telling me that yeah. he was training for that. That was yeah. in Sault Ste. Yeah, Sault Ste. Marie. Saint Marie That's yeah. crazy. So, I mean, they're getting even closer to here, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, uh, if you want to go and challenge yourself, challenge or... yourself uh, a little bit more, uh, show the, how crazy you are, then uh, there's opportunities. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> definitely <do> so. <laughs> crazy. Like, I, I told my wife the other day that one day I'm going to run a 100 mile race. Yeah. yeah. And uh, don't know when. <laughs> But one day, one day I'm going to run for a hundred miles. Or I, what did I tell you? I think I was, I might've been drunk at this time, but I said, oh, one that, day I'm going to run. That's usually this. when the best, <laughs> that's usually when the commitments come out. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> Jay, one day I'm going to run to Sudbury. <laughs> and back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after a couple of sleeps, but yeah. no, uh, the ultra running stuff I, I thought also was very interesting after I read Born to Run because some of the distances and the stories that they tell in this book, it's just absolutely insane. Yeah. Like the, the amount of persistence and like, I, I don't know, like the ups and downs that you've yeah. got to go through. Like, and, the, and you think about it, eh? the Tarim Uharan tribe, the, yeah, the runners, yeah, yeah, yeah. they would mm-hmm. cut a piece of tire <laughs> to the shape of their foot. Yep. They put a little strap on it and wrap it to their feet and they'd run in this stuff. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, what the yeah, heck? Yeah. There's like one story in that book where the guy, he says something like, um, one guy ran the equivalent of five marathons straight. Yeah. And, uh, and he ran it in like, 
something ridiculous. It was oh, like yeah. in, a, in like three or four days there, mm-hmm. and and it's just like, okay, yeah. And it was uh, one of these guys there, the the uh, Tara Tara Umaru. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. it's it's hard. To, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's no problem. Hard to pronounce, but <laughs> yeah, those guys. Uh, <laughs> and oh, those guys, <laughs> those huh? Guys. Yeah, another Don Cherry Those right Don here. Cherry. Oh, they're gonna, oh. Kick, they're gonna kick me off the air. <laughs> Those guys. Well, you know what? We 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 spent a lot of time talking about about running here tonight, and we always tend to shoot the bullshit a little bit about yeah. uh, what's in the news. And this is something we absolutely had to talk about yeah. with whoever, whatever unsuspecting guest was coming on. Oh the next no! <laughs> but I, I, I am so interested to get everybody's take on this Don Cherry stuff. Yeah, because it, I, I feel like there's been such, like, like a lot of people have been talking about this yeah. in ways that, to me, seem a little confused. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Like, what was your thought on it? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let's. <laughs> You say something yeah, bad you, first. You say something, and then we'll and then jump. We'll, and then we'll just <laughs> don't say, take the opposite side, we'll, <laughs> yeah. depending what side you take here. No problem. How'd you feel about your Don Cherry's comments? Well, to be honest, uh, the you people, you, the you people. I think he was referring to you people as everybody, everybody that doesn't have a poppy, everybody. Like I, I think he was making a generalization of everybody else that didn't, mm-hmm. and. Um, and I have to say, I'm not a fan of Don Cherry. I never really was a fan of Don Cherry. I'm a, I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan. I know you're. A, I know you're. A lead so a real hockey fan. So a real yeah. hockey fan. Yeah, just just so you know, Corey. And All right, um, so 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 he's on that ha- note. he's hammered us uh, a lot, uh, right? Uh, yes. But he's he's an old school guy, man. And uh, you've got to be able to understand the context in which he's he's talking as well. And I think it was. I think it was a little bit too extreme in terms of a reaction, mm. uh, to be uh, to be quite honest. Uh, um, you know, from my end, anyways, uh, some things you have to take with a grain of salt a little mm. bit. And Don Cherry, yeah, he crosses that line. But what do you expect? Every Saturday night, he's doing this crap. Uh, so, you know, do you expect anything different? Uh, no, as far as I'm concerned, no. And I'm not surprised mm. he said something like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, but but using the term you people... Uh, I think, I mean, anybody that doesn't have a poppy would feel like they're getting a, they're getting an arrow. There's no doubt. Yeah. But at the end of the day, uh, I think if it could be used as a conversation starter to make people understand the importance of the history and have mm. and what that poppy represents and that kind of stuff, I think that's that's that could be a beautiful thing. But at the end, he still said it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, there could have been a better way, and uh, I would have really have liked to have seen. Maybe Don Cherry come out the next day and yeah. just clarify his comment. You know, if he would have clarified his comment, I, I think things would have been fine. But you might have given the benefit of a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I I think <laughs> But he did. I think that's that that's probably as charitable as I would I would give him because mm-hmm. I, on the other hand, am and have been a Don Cherry fan. Yeah. No, I, I really have. Like I, I but I've always seen him as just like this kind of crazy guy the caricature yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who even on hockey stuff i don't even know that he was to be taken seriously <laughs> you know like, like coach boston what yeah, do you expect like, like that? The, guy, the guy was just <laughs> like he would talk and he was the kind of guy who yeah. was the character that was designed to sort of rile people up right yeah. and given the history of what the, some of the stuff that he said in the past the thing that got me when he said the you people comment is what came right after. It was you people who come here. Yeah, I see, yeah, you're right. That yeah. that piece there is a is And a he said exactly piece. certain cities. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, and then he singled out, like the in context, like I get, you people can mean all sorts of people, yeah. right? But when you say you people who come here and you're talking and then you start to specify, well, we don't see this with the folks in the small cities. And mm. like, I think it's disingenuous to think, to say that you don't know what he's talking about. Right. We like all the kinda, people, we all, like yeah. we all sort of knew what Don Cherry was come was saying there. And to me, it just sort of signified like, yeah, like this is kind of the end. Like this is not what hockey is no. anymore. Yeah. And it, and it, it's kind of a good thing, you know. It's kind of it's kind of a good thing that it's more inclusive because, to me, it didn't it didn't offend me at all to hear that. Like I and I don't think it was 
it would have ever been directed to offend me. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was directed to offend anybody, but I think it, it didn't offend me. But what sort of made me a little bit more sensitive to the situation was trying to think like, okay, maybe it didn't offend me, but what if I was a 10 year old, uh, child of an immigrant who like Maldzud's a hockey, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, I'm, I'm really getting into hockey and this is like something that, that I'm sort of completely all in. This is my identity as a Canadian. And to hear that implied on TV by somebody who's supposed to represent hockey like that, that's really something yeah. that hit me hard because like, just to sort of try to put yourself in, in that person's shoes and and I was like, yeah, it's it's time for for him to go. You know, yeah, it's yeah, not absolutely. it's not the right world. Now that said, I've been saying that for years. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, and it's not surprising yeah. like that. Maybe he was left on TV a lot, a lot, like way past his uh, best before date. Yeah. You know, and the the thing that uh, that w that was difficult to sort of cope with is the kind of online pylon that came onto that right oh, yeah. and the one thing that i'd like everybody to realize after is that you know society catches up to everyone so one day you're going to be an 85 year old man who's living in a world he doesn't yep. understand and you know let's hope you're not on tv <laughs> <laughs> that's, and, that's what happens in your public persona exactly right? you're there, right? exactly you're fully exposed. look at the calgary coach uh, calgary yeah. flames coach yeah. right now right so so maybe we should we should yeah. If we're going to broaden the definition of what's considered racist, which I think is a good thing. I think we should start being more more sensitive to these things. Yeah. We need to sort of broaden how we deal with people with the people who are who used to live in that old world and don't understand how to make the transition into mm -hmm. the new the new way that we're supposed yeah. to treat e each other with respect, you know. I think what you say there is uh, is, is key. Generous. As far as I'm concerned, <clears throat> I don't care. Like it doesn't matter where you're from, what color you are. It doesn't really matter. It's just mm -hmm. you know what? If you're a runner, man, I love you. No. <laughs> <laughs> but if no, you're but not, I, yeah. you can <laughs> no, just yeah, eat yeah, it, right. eat it. No, but the, you know what? It's it's a question of respect. Yeah. And um, I had a conversation with um, a good friend of mine this morning in regards to respect that way. And uh, you're. You're right. I mean, it doesn't matter who the person across from you is. Just, you know what? Just respect them like your neighbor. That's it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to like everybody. That's for sure. Just like at work, you don't have to like everybody. But you know what? You still got to work with them and just be a good neighbor. No, that's it. 100%. Where's this good neighbor thing? Uh, you know, where did it go where you can go get a cup of sugar to your neighbor if you're ever yeah. sure, right? Yeah. Like things like that don't happen anymore. No. <clears throat> Isaac? I was always into the coveting. Uh, 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 coveting my neighbor, like that's what I was into. And the what? Where'd that go? Coveting your neighbor. Coveting. No? Jay, Jay's a commandment breaker. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. so, what was your impression of this whole Don Cherry thing? My I want to get. I want you to give your take, Jay. Yeah, because I always say something that will totally torpedo any chance of me becoming a politician. Uh, <laughs> so so he ran it, for council once. I know. I know. Did he get in? I yeah, you no, did, did get not. in. No, no, I did not. Didn't you get in and then leave? No, that was a great one. <laughs> oh, okay, wrong person. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Much better looking than him. <laughs> ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> no, uh, so when it happened, I first said, I don't give a crap. I really don't give a shit. Uh, I said that because it's an old man who is past his prime, who has essentially made a career and a very wealthy living for 30 years, firstly, taxpayer dollars yep. and said a bunch of th things about taxpayers <laughs> about different people who are paying his salary That's a good so good French, French Canadians yeah French uh, Canadian and all that stuff and, and just Europeans who moved yeah. here and all that stuff so and then you know now you know, that, yeah he went through over to Roger like Rogers bought the contract and bought his contract and he was paid by whoever uh, any employer can fire you for whatever the hell they want to That's yeah. it's completely yep. in their, yep. their purview uh, this happened they probably said you know what we don't have to deal with, we don't have to deal with the backlash just get rid of them it's enough done uh i think if you know i think everyone's trying to give a, an old man a benefit of the doubt and i let's be honest he's an old man who like old people are sending their ways or they, they grew up in a time where you know that what he said to him might not have been something bad but we know what he was saying yeah we know when we said you people we want to say well you know he didn't really say what type of people he wasn't really mentioning you know he didn't say anything about you know was it you know punjabi people moving here was it whoever 
He didn't say any of that. Uh, we know exactly what he's saying. He was talking about, you know, like, oh, Toronto, Mississauga, and, and Vancouver. All right, well, we can kind of pick off who he's kind of trying, yeah. to, trying to mention. And so we, we want to go with that. So we know what it is. So, like, if anyone wants to be honest themselves, I think we know. Uh, and I, you say at one point, you know, like, uh, you know, I think the idea of trying to educate people on knowing how important this is, what the poppy means. Let's be honest. Your kid is how, your your two kids are how old right now? Six and three. The six year old when he w- was he was when he was in school in November, November eleventh. Yeah, I guarantee he was taught what poppy was, and he taught about somewhat about the mm-hmm. Second World War or about the First World War, and he taught like why we we have this. They take they have a whole celebration at school yeah. during that day, which is also why yeah. I think they shouldn't have That's a right. stat holiday for Remembrance Day because kids will actually learn it. We are not not teaching our kids what Remembrance Day is about. Yeah, that we are taught. We are teaching them; they know. So the idea that you know we have to remind people what the poppy is about, and so our kids know, and everyone is taught. Mm-hmm. It is adults who willfully not want to wear a poppy or not want to look at it. And guess what? It's in your complete purview not to yeah, put one on. Yeah, you, was, people died yeah. on the beach of Normandy for you to do that. For you to be able to hell do, do whatever the hell you want to yeah, do. Exactly. So, and also they died for you to be able to say whatever the hell you want to say on, on radio or whatever. But guess what? There's repercussions to anything you say or do. Uh, let's be honest. There's no freedom of... Uh, uh, we do not have a constitutional right for freedom of expression in Canada. Uh, it is not like, you know, it's not fr- freedom of speech like they have in the States. That's not the same. We do not it's have not the, same the same thing. thing. We don't so, have the same standard. We We've had this standard. conversation yeah. before. So you can't get I into this. <laughs> yeah. so you can't get into that. So he, it's an old man who said something. I think we should take it like a grain of salt. Uh, yeah. It's about time he's gone. You know, screw it. He's done. Uh, people who are so offended by this, and the thing that pisses me off the most is people who are offended by it and are trying to say, like, oh, the left is so easy triggered, yet these people are the <laughs> most triggered by <laughs> the know, most I pointless know. shit I that know. has zero effect on my I life. Know. Guess what? When Coach's Corner went on, uh, would go on during uh, intermission, especially in the last... 12 years, I get up and go have a beer. Yeah. Yeah. Go get a beer yeah. and go talk and go, hey, let's, let me go make some nachos right now real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I'm I think not people, listening to this old man. I think people who are framing this as like, a, oh, society's gotten too <clears throat> soft, we're offended by everything. Um, I think they're missing a, a big point here is that, no, it's not that people are offended. It's that we're setting a new standard yeah. on what on um, what is decency. Mm-hmm. And uh, nobody's arguing to put Don Cherry in jail or no. bring yeah, him to exactly. court or anything. It's that, you know what, people didn't like what he said. And I th- personally, I think for good reason. Um, and and I think that it was just the time, you know, like it, it, I do. I think he's an evil person. No, no, not by all means. And I, that's why I sort of prefaced all of this saying like I, I have been and probably still am a bit of a Don Cherry fan. Like I'll probably watch Rock'em Sock'em Hockey and think, yeah, like, but that's yeah. a different. I'm not like, going to sit yeah. there and pretend like I don't enjoy it. But I'm I'm telling you, like what he said is like it's not okay to just have that broadcast on TV all the time. Yeah, you know, you know? like it's and well, the platform that he was, the platform he had to say something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody's mm-hmm. listening. Like, uh, yeah, I just yeah. I to be honest, I, I never really watched on Cherry too much. I oh. mean, I I'd rather watch my game in French. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I had the S. So I had oh, the man. more passionate announcers. But, you know what I uh, told Jay? I said. RDS and I, I tell my son this too. I said, <laughs> "No way!" Like you watch, you watch the Habs on RDS. All it is is replays of '93. Yeah, it's not. You think you're oh, we watching won again? Yeah, wow. it's like you watch the Habs on RDS. They're always winning. We're always like, beating the Kings all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so so who they play? The, the Kings again. The Kings again. Oh, that's funny. oh man. <laughs> So that said, we're uh, we've just passed well, uh, the hour and a half mark oh, of the yeah. podcast here. Like they, we, these things Holy get they go crap. quick, eh? They yeah. do go we've quick. Done, quick. We've done some long, <laughs> some ones. very long ones. Dur- sometimes uh, during elections, uh, we've done live ones. Yeah, we did yeah. one during the um, U.S. presidential election. Oh, did you? And it was like four and a half hours. Oh, we were God. we were a little tanked by the end. We were like, and we had to tap out. They still wouldn't call it at the end, and it was just <laughs> it was brutal. Did you do the last Canadian yes, election? Yes, we did. Yeah. 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 That was a fun one. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, fun. Uh, former Mayor Black and yep. also uh, Andrew Audio. Uh, so we had him in. We were all kind of going over the, uh, the the result, and people were online talking crap and just like on the, the YouTube oh, yeah. live <laughs> one. And 
Uh, yeah, it was fun. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. fun. We we've had a lot of fun with this podcast, so it's uh, that's pretty cool. It's always fun. We the goal well, of this is a great job with this, oh, man. This well, is awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. We really appreciate it. And uh, the goal of this is always to bring in interesting people and have a chat with. Uh, so we missed out today, but you know, we usually <laughs> try bring in. Tr- <laughs> Jay is the comic <laughs> relief on I'm this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that said, uh, thanks so much for coming in, Mark. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for coming have a beer with us and the thoughtful discussion talking about no uh, your running experience uh, your experience running uh, Borealis uh, f- Fresh, Fresh Farms. Uh, tell us about uh, it real quick first. Yeah, get, tell us where we can find it online, uh, your location address, anywhere yeah, where absolutely. anybody who's listening can And find even it. Oh, your real goal about doing Like, what's your ultimate goal on bringing this business in? Just sure. buy me a bit of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're buying yeah, he's, some time. he's searching some stuff here. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I mean, our our overall goal for Borealis Fresh Farms is just to bring local produce to uh, to mar- like to our market. Uh, we never have access to that 12 months of the year. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you you look at food insecurities affecting the north and we in Timmins we are affected by that mm-hmm. so taking control of our food chain to a certain degree I think is extremely important for us going forward so Borealis Fresh Farms is there to bring high nutrient dense produce uh, without the use of without the use of herbicides uh, pesticides <clears throat> that hasn't been exposed to uh, diesel fuel mm. from California mm-hmm. uh, you know when you travel like for a piece of kale for example in the wintertime, usually it comes from California, and then late winter, it starts coming up from, from Texas. Well, you know, you add 3,000 kilometers of diesel fuel yeah. exposure to your food, yeah. and here we are eating this stuff. Like, you know what? We want fresh, nutrient-dense produce, and I think that's very important for everybody uh, um, in our area. Mm-hmm. Not just our area, but anywhere, right? So if you can go the, if we can do the, uh, the, the local food movement, that, uh, I think that's a, that's a great thing, so... Become a local vor, <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's and a good uh, term. but Borealis, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Borealis Fresh Farms actually dry, it has a mandate to drive that 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 piece as much as possible to strengthen the ecosystem to bring more fresh produce to market and um, and we really uh, we're really quite passionate about uh, growing fresh local produce. Nice. Uh, we love um, we love the dialogues we're having with a lot of the. Uh, community members we love talking to the schools we've done tours we've gone in a classroom we've done a lot of really oh yeah 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 speaking of classrooms uh yeah <laughs> who's <classroom>? Jay, this <laughs> dude <laughs> so we did that and uh but uh it, i think it's very important for people to realize where their food's coming from and yeah. what uh you know and we always say one of the most important decisions you'll ever make in your life uh, second to running a marathon, <laughs> but uh, is actually what you put at the end of your fork because yeah. that's your fuel. I mean, that's the fuel you put in your body. So you got to kind of, you should know a little bit about it uh, mm-hmm. before you consume it. So, so for us, that's very important. And uh, our hope is to, to have uh, Borealis grow a lot of this produce. Uh, we're looking at expansion now um, to diversify our product offering. And again, it's just bringing local growing local produce for the community. Awesome. So that's awesome. kind of what Borealis does. Uh, we are located uh, in South Porcupine, so across from Porcupine Lake. Okay. Uh, you can't come to the farm to buy produce because <clears throat> this is kind of like a lab almost. Like mm. a, uh, everything is sanitized. Everything is enclosed, controlled environments. So uh, we uh, we deal directly with uh, local businesses like uh, Picket a Crop. Picket okay. a Crop is one of our biggest uh uh, distributors of our products. Uh, we've got the urban farm in South Porcupine as well that does a great job. Uh, we deal with a few restaurants as well. Um, we have uh, Radical Gardens that uses some of our produce. Uh, we also have Northern Lights for Majorie, that's a big supporter of Borealis. Um, if you are in Cochrane, um, there's also Boussier's uh, Fresh Meats uh, that offers our products at their store. Excellent. So, yeah, just a great place, and, uh, and we're working on a few other... Uh, the other places there now. So hopefully uh, in the next little while we'll have more places and uh, yeah, keep on growing the business. Nice. So, so it's a growing business. <laughs> so everybody go out and get some of that stuff. I it's know. really healthy for I you. I feel like that's, I'm going to pick the crop tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just sounds delicious. Like my mouth's watering. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Really? Holy yeah, moly. And I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty big food. carnivore. So <laughs> I was just saying like the words fresh and produce like just go so good together, you know? And it's amazing when you have somebody creative in the kitchen that can do stuff with this stuff. It's amazing no. the stuff that you can do with it. So, yeah. yeah. And the, the good thing about being plant-based for myself now is 
you know, yeah, so I lost meats, I lost dairy, but all of the different spices and produces that I use now, my plate is always full of color and there's always there's always something good. Something good <clears> in there. Yeah. Always, always, always. Nice, yeah. nice. Right on. So if anybody's interested in following you for your running exploits, where where can they uh, follow you online? Uh, that's a great question. You can follow me on uh, my Instagram. I, uh, that's kind of my running, uh, platform, I oh, guess. Okay. I kind of post on, on, uh, Facebook thirst as well. Trap sold to, <laughs> thirst trap. Thirst trap. Shirtless <laughs> pictures just, uh, in front Showing of the off. <laughs> Well, you saw my pictures. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so what's your For the handle? record, I always have my, <laughs> I always have always. my shirt on. So what's your handle on Instagram? Let me pull it up. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> It's um, Mark Rod, so uh, M A R C R O D seventy one seventy one, and uh, you can find me there, and you can also search me up on uh, on Facebook as well. I'm on there as well. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And you can follow you can follow Park Run as well. Uh, oh Gilly's, yes, Gilly's Lake Park Run. Yeah, there's the Timmins Running Club as well that you can follow on Facebook, right? On Facebook, Timmins Running Club. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So I would encourage you guys to do that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still haven't given that page a follow, but uh, no, I, I feel like I'd. I'm, nah, uh, you should. I should come up with some friends there. Something else yeah, too is if anybody's social. ever got any questions about running, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> with myself, Jeremy, Christian, uh, we, I mean, we're a group there that can really help answer some questions as well. So. Mm-hmm. If anybody's got any questions whatsoever, I mean, I invite them to reach out to us at Timmins Running Club and uh, and just send us their questions, and mm-hmm. we'll definitely uh, do our best to answer those questions. Well, that's amazing. Well, thanks again, Mark, for coming in. We really appreciate your time and uh, you coming and having a beer and uh, chatting with us. And Jay, do you have some I, words of wisdom for us tonight? I do have. Yeah? Oh, that's I what have, you were doing. I have a, uh, words of wisdom. <laughs> I have a beautiful quote from uh, Oscar winner, three-time Oscar winner, uh, Jack Nicholson. Oh, I love this guy. This guy's should be good. Should Beer be good. is the best damn drink in the world. There we go. <laughs> <That works. laughs> Cheers. 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 Thanks for having me on, guys. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Cheers.